and welcome. Today, we're going to take a brief look at the history of the Creature Commandos. They've remained pretty obscure in the DC Universe, but due to the recent announcement of an HBO Max animated series written by James Gunn, the Commandos have started to get some attention. So let's look at how this team has evolved through the years, and what's known about their future. If I may insert myself for a moment, if you like this video, please subscribe. As always, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the following video. The original Creature Commandos debuted in Weird War Tales No. 93 from 1980. They were created by the writer J.M.D. Mateus and the artist Pat Broderick. This team was the result of a secret military experiment called Project M. Project M scientifically created classic monster archetypes. A vampire, Vincent Velcro, who fed on blood and could transform into a bat. A werewolf, Warren Griffith, who cannot control when he transforms into his wolf self and the monster, Lucky Taylor, a soldier who has reassembled after stepping on a landmine. This mute powerhouse is also a tender soul, one who regularly felt deep empathy for the victims of war and equally deep remorse for the acts of violence he is ordered to take. All three are soldiers, altered to create psychological terror in the enemy, although for the most part they did covert missions attacking equally odd enemy targets. They are commanded by Matthew Shreve, who begins off as tough and demanding like an average military commander. However, over time, he begins to treat his team with disgust, openly mocking them and their monstrous appearance. Eventually, the team would expand to include Dr. Medusa, aka Myrna Rhodes, a woman accidentally doused with chemicals that turns her hair into living snakes. She doesn't have any superpower other than looking kind of creepy. Although, her snake hair is used as a distraction frequently and they may be poisonous, it's never made all that clear. Occasionally, Jake the GI robot would help the team on missions, although he never officially joins the team. For the most part, all of their appearances were interesting but somewhat unremarkable. The creator, J.M.D. Mateus, only wrote a handful of stories featuring the team before moving on, although he did further develop the characters during his brief time. Vincent Velcro acquired a slightly cynical edge. Warren Griffith was fleshed out as a simple farm boy when in human form, and a vicious beast when he was a werewolf. Also, he was given further treatment to control his transformation, but that control was erratic at best. Lucky Taylor was a gentle beast that moped and silently suffered. At one point, he attempted to take his own life following an especially brutal mission. The majority of the remaining appearances were written by Robert Kaniger, a writer legendary for the amount of war stories he wrote for DC. Although he did have a very lengthy run as a writer and editor on Wonder Woman from 1948 to 1969. Kaniger shaped the commander, Matthew Shreve, into a cruel and unsympathetic character, one that took every chance he could to mock his crew. In many ways, he became a bully with a gun and a small measure of authority. This was likely to avoid Shreve being a copy of Sergeant Coker, the handler of Jake, the GI robot, who developed a certain sympathy or respect for his silent metal companion. Regardless, Shreve may have started out with playful banter, but Kaniger changed this to outright contempt. Kaniger was also the one to introduce Dr. Medusa, but the character didn't change or develop in any particular direction. She was just another oddball on this oddball team. Unfortunately, Weird War Tales was cancelled in 1983 with its 124th issue. Both Jake and the Creature Commandos get a literal one-page send-off in that final issue. They are sentenced to die for displaying signs of humanity, but they receive a final mission from Matthew Shreve. They are loaded into an ICBM along with the writer Robert Kaniger and fired at Germany. The rocket goes off course and heads into deep space to an unknown destination. Thus ended the brief career of the Creature Commandos. As a neat side note, their final fate would be ambiguous until 2009 when they were discovered to be part of Brainiac's collection. They were released and may actually exist somewhere within the DC Universe. If one is being nitpicky, they'll notice that Matthew Shreve is included on the team even though he was the one who shot them into space. But you know, that's an error that's easy to overlook. After all, it's not like they could have included Robert Kaniger, who, in reality, passed away in 2002. As another side note, this team was featured in the animated series Batman the Brave and the Bold and their own dedicated videos for DC Nation shorts. 
The second iteration of the Creature Commandos appeared in the year 2000 in a series written by Tim Truman and illustrated by Scott Eaton. This team is the first line of defense for Earth in a trans-dimensional war. For the most part, this version is a completely reimagined team using the basics of the previously established characters. Returning is the vampire, Vincent Velcoro, the werewolf, Warren Griffith, the monster, Elliot Taylor, and finally, there's Myra Rhodes, who does have red snakes for hair, but isn't very Medusa-like. However, there are a few new additions. The team is led by Captain Lucius Hunter, who has had multiple transplants and possibly some other enhancements. As it turns out, this is a classic DC war hero, Ben Lucius Hunter, the former leader of the Hellcats. There's also Aiton, a mummy who serves as a communications officer, and Bogman, a creature from the Black Lagoon type of character. Both are, essentially, minor background characters, but technically part of the team. The major addition is the point of view character, a recently revived marine with cybernetic implants. Again, like everyone in the series, the character's origin is very vague. Although he does take the name Gunner, which heavily implies he was the Gunner, in the classic war story starring the team of Gunner and Sarge. Notably, on their only adventure, the creature commandos meet and join forces with Claw the Unconquered to fight a battle against Saturna, an interdimensional warlord. They win a very hasty war, and then literally ride away into the sunset. So, the series is riddled with obscure characters from mostly forgotten war stories. This was only an 8-issue miniseries. Presumably, this was a test run, to see if the concept was popular enough to support an ongoing series. Instead, it drifted into obscurity. At its core, it's very plot-oriented, and there's not a lot of character building going on. The backstory of Project M and the origins or motivations of nearly every character is functionally non-existent, which isn't to suggest it's a terrible series. With a limited amount of issues, the writer, Tim Truman, had to keep the series trim and just concentrate on the premise. Had sales been good and another series was ordered, it's possible Truman may have filled out the areas that were lacking in the original series. Unfortunately, sales were terrible. It scraped the bottom of the top 200 for its entire run which basically killed any possibility of a sequel. A temporary version of the Creature Commandos appeared in Flashpoint, Frankenstein, and the Creatures of the Unknown. In this three-issue miniseries, the Creature Commandos exist during World War II, like the original group from 1980. They are joined by the modern DC iteration of Frankenstein, and Nina Mazursky, the amphibian hybrid, is added to the team. Like the originals, all these monsters are scientifically created, in fact, Nina is the daughter of the team's creator, Dr. Myron Mazursky. However, as stated a moment ago, this was a temporary version. It's a side story created for the Flashpoint event. Once Flashpoint concluded, a new version of this team emerged. The final iteration of the Creature Commandos occurred in Frankenstein, Agent of Shade. They are, essentially, the team assigned to Frankenstein to help him on his missions. Keeping with tradition, all the creatures have been created using a scientific method except for one member, Kellis the Mummy, whose origin is a mystery, although it's possible the character is a callback to the highly obscure mummy with the same name from first issue special number 9. Regardless, this team includes the repeating characters Warren Griffin and Vincent Felcoro. Nina Mazursky, from the temporary Flashpoint version, is now a doctor and was responsible for engineering Griffith, Velcoro, and herself into the creatures they are today. Also added to the team, for a brief period, was Lady Frankenstein, also known as The Bride. The series, written by Jeff Lemire and then Matt Kint, contain reasonably good adventures. While not the stars of the series, the creature commandos appear frequently and the backstories of the characters are fleshed out to a degree. Unfortunately, the series would only last 16 issues and the creature commandos returned once again to relative obscurity. They've had a variety of appearances since, but for the most part, the team faded from view. Conveniently, that brings us to the animated series. Here's where we get into a mix of what's been announced and a little speculation about the future. At the time of this writing, the animated series is currently in production, the cast is being chosen, and all seven episodes have been written by James Gunn. Presumably, with seven episodes and seven characters, each character will have an episode focused primarily on them possibly with some type of origin story and an overall arc that connects their individual stories together. The projected air date is sometime in 2024. The Creature Commandos will be assembled by Amanda Waller, who put together Task Force X, also known as the Suicide Squad. So possibly the Commandos might be known as Task Force M? Question mark. 
The creature commandos could be the nickname the team picks for itself, but they're officially known as something else. There are seven characters in the main cast. Rick Flagg Sr., Nina Mazursky, Dr. Phosphorus, Eric Frankenstein, Jake the GI Robot, Weasel, and the protagonist, the Bride of Frankenstein. So, in comparison to the other comic book teams, this version of the Creature Commandos appears to contain mainly new characters, or new interpretations, and a slightly different, modernized premise, one that ties into the previously established Suicide Squad. As for the team itself, Rick Flagg Sr. was the leader of the very first iteration of the Suicide Squad from 1959, and his son, Rick Flagg Jr., is the current leader of the modern Suicide Squad. Since Flagg is the only purely human character, and he has military training, it's a good guess he'll be the field commander on missions. Along with Waller, Flagg Sr. is probably there to add a little continuity between the Suicide Squad and the Creature Commandos, as does the Weasel, who was last seen in Suicide Squad. In the comics, the Weasel is just some creepy guy in a bad costume, but in the Suicide Squad movie, he seems to be some Weasel and human hybrid. He's not around long enough to get an actual origin. The addition of the weasel is probably for comedic relief, and because Gunn seems to have a thing for mostly non-verbal characters. Speaking of which, there's also Jake, the GI robot. Jake stands for Jungle Automatic Killer Experimental, which is a pretty awkward acronym. In fact, in the screenshot, it's Jake 2. This acknowledges the death and replacement of the original Jake in Weird War Tales. Although it has to be noted, in the Flashpoint series, Jake does speak and the acronym has changed to Joint Action Killing Engine. The animated series will likely adopt this acronym and his ability to speak. Otherwise, they'll have two characters that just make various noises. Nina Mazursky is a recent creation, and they could take her in any direction. Best guess is they'll keep her science background and the fact that she altered herself into her current state. Something similar can be said for Eric Frankenstein, who could be a version of the Agent of Shade or some unique combination so both will probably be similar to their comic book counterparts, but will likely be changed to suit the direction of the TV series. Again, this will likely apply to The Bride 2, who slightly resembles Lady Frankenstein from the comics, even though she's missing the additional two arms. The best guess is they'll keep the past romantic connection between Frankenstein and The Bride, just to add a little drama and conflict within the team. Otherwise, why have both on the team? The final member is Dr. Phosphorus, also known as Dr. Alex Sartorius, an old Batman villain. He's been around since 1977, but has lingered well in the background over the years. I mean, like the weasel, he's a bit ridiculous. After all, his origin is he was blasted by radioactive sand, and he's perpetually on fire. Keeping with mild speculation, the purpose of the team is to provide a bridge between superhero movies and supernatural or horror movies. The Creature Commandos comfortably fit in that gap. They're basically both elements in one. So they'll provide a certain level of continuity between DC Universe movies and TV projects. In the end, the Creature Commandos may not be an obvious key component to the new DC Universe, but they have a fair amount of potential. Generally speaking, despite being around for decades, they're an unknown quantity. Therefore, it's safe to say the obscurity of the Commandos leads to lowered or non-existent expectations for the animated series. As long as the material is strong, then whatever direction is established could be successful. Thanks to all the fine members that directly support this channel. And if you've made it this far in the video, why not subscribe or become a member? I try not to be an annoying pitch man like Funky Flashman or something, but this channel needs support. A lot of support. So if you like what you see, then click a few links below this video and help out. Every subscription, membership, or donation is greatly appreciated. Not to mention, it makes the mythical YouTube algorithm notice this channel, which for some reason, it seems to avoid recommending. Okay, that's enough from me. I made my pitch. Thank you for watching. I'll talk at you later.